Lizette Curnow has been a genetic counsellor with Victorian Clinical Genetic Services for 18 years. She first discovered genetics while doing a Bachelor of Science at Deakin University. So I always enjoyed genetics, although I didn't enjoy, I enjoyed the medical genetics component, but of course you spend most of your time at uni dealing with Drosophila flies and talking about plants, and I didn't love that. So actually I probably enjoyed microbiology more than genetics, but human genetics I always loved. And when did you start saying human genetics at uni? No, probably not until third year, probably. Best or last? Yeah, yeah. And then I heard about genetic counselling, which was a very new profession back then in 1996. Yep, so you heard about this new thing called genetic counselling? Probably in 96. Yep. And my, in fact, my genetics lecturer said only doctors do genetic counselling, so you won't be able to do it. Mm -hmm. But I heard differently from a, I think it was my sister-in-law, and I came in and spoke with Margaret Ross, who was a genetic counsellor here. And so there was an open day at, well, it was MCRI at the time, it was VCGS back mm -hmm. then. It changed from VCGS to genetic health back to VCGS. And I met Margaret and I left that day saying to myself, I want that job. I want to do what she does. Why did um, you fall so in love with that job? I think it was the combination of the science. And th this is what I hear students say to me all the time now. Loving something about science. The, you know, it's such a rapidly evolving area, genetics especially. It's exciting and challenging and interesting and stimulating. But the idea of working in a lab never excited me. Mm -hmm. Certainly not long term. And so this combined the fact that I enjoyed talking to people, I'm curious, uh, I really enjoy that human interaction and so it seemed like a great way to combine those was, two things. I always think of it as social work meets science, what do you think of that for a summary? I guess that's, that's not an unreasonable way to say it, we probably more so say that we're translators, we work between the doctors and the families to simplify complex medical information into a way that becomes meaningful for families because how many times have you seen a doctor and they use words that you don't know what they mean and so it, none of this matters mm -hmm. if we can't simplify it. How many families do you think you've seen in just 18 oh, years? It would have to be getting into the over a thousand I suppose. Okay. Do you use a lot of metaphors or similes to simplify the science? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So how complex is genetics and how? what are the challenges when it comes to simplifying it? Genetics is very complex and it gets more complex as we discover new th technology. For instance, when I first started in genetics, it used to be that you'd talk about types of inheritance, dominant and recessive and X-linked. And, it, you know, you did talk about single genes and things like that. Now we're talking about the entire genome. You know, we're talking about exome testing, thousands of genes, what so that is it means. So 22,000 genome? Uh, 22, 23, 22,000 genes. We thought we were much more complex than that. But I guess over the years I've evolved ways of ex explaining what a gene does. So I often use, you know, a, a cake, a recipe that it's like making a gene is like, it's listing all the ingredients that the body needs to make a thing called a protein. And that protein will have a particular job, like it might say what color your eyes are or your hair, or it could be more complex, like it's involved in the development of your brain cells or your muscle cells. And I'll explain that within that, it's just like you follow a recipe to make a cake. And if you leave the eggs out of a recipe, the cake's not going to work. And so if your body leaves out an essential ingredient from a gene, the protein won't be developed properly. And whatever that protein was supposed to do won't happen the way it's meant to. Different analogies work for different people in their explanations. And in fact, you, it's good to have a couple of options because everyone comes from a different educational and socioeconomic and ethnic background where different things make sense to one person and not another. So it's good to have a backup. What sort of resources do you have? Have you written genomics for dummies for me? <laughs> There's a lot of online learning that's being developed at the moment. Uh, I've been involved in the first instance in um, developing an online learning tool for non-genetic specialists. So we talk about simplifying things for members of the general public, but non-genetic specialists need simplifying, uh, you know, simple explanations of genetics as well. So we're trying to develop these tools that, so non-genetic specialists can be upskilled and they can be involved in ordering tests because there's too much work, there's too many genetic tests people want to use and not enough genetic counsellors or geneticists to be the ones on the front line all the time. Do you know how many genetic counsellors there are in Australia? So it's grown so much since I started. So I was in the second year of the graduate diploma of genetic counselling. We had 11 people in our year. As of last year, now the course is a master's program and there was, there's 20 students. So 
all of those students will get jobs. Back when I did the course, there was no guarantee of getting a job. There was very few counsellors employed. Um, there was a lot of competition. And these days, there's more demand than supply. So yep. there's basically a shortage of genetic counsellors. We're at that point now. Yep. Yep, so there's more work than people to do it. What is the, perhaps the, the biggest challenge you've encountered with the family? What, what was a, a particularly difficult situation in terms of translation of knowledge? Because you're dealing with people who are very anxious and emotional, that's always a challenge. So trying to simplify complex information when someone is distressed or grieving or particularly anxious just complicates everything further. So I can think of hundreds of situations, probably certainly dozens, where it was tricky to get my point across. And so over the years, I've figured out you don't have to... It's not essential for someone to understand exactly what a gene does or how it's inherited. You, you can pick out some key points that are really important for that person to take away to understand and leave the rest of it. And, and I guess genetic counsellors are very good at being client focused. So we follow where the client wants to go. They'll ask the questions that they want to understand and, and we will follow them to a point. And what have been perhaps an example or two of some of your more rewarding experiences? Oh, I would say almost all of my interactions with clients I consider rewarding. It is an incredible privilege to be allowed to share the most intimate and difficult times of people's lives often with them and share the journey and, and witness their grief and loss and joy. I mean, it, it's an incredibly privileged position to be in. So I get pleasure from every person I meet in different ways. Of course, like anything, you connect more with some people than others, and that can be challenging as well as rewarding. I think it's the idea that you're making a difficult time somehow more manageable is what's most satisfying about my role. So even when you're breaking bad news, if I feel like they know that I care what happens and that I'm giving them the information they need, then I've done my job well and that's the best you can do. You can't fix things. Final question, what would you say to a young person who is considering a career as a genetics counsellor? I regularly talk to people who are interested in, in the course and this profession and I, you know, after a very long time in it, I haven't lost my passion for what I do. In fact, I'd say it probably increases as, you know, with the years, with my deeper understanding of people and of the science, that it's endlessly rewarding. It's incredibly challenging. You work within a great team of passionate people. I think that's one thing I always say about the workplaces that genetic counsellors work in. Everyone's working towards a common goal and there's nothing more inspiring than working with like-minded people. So I'd absolutely encourage anyone who enjoys science but also enjoys interacting with people that this is a great career choice.